What Up, This Is Rama Screen, and in, in the anticipation of Night Ride, which arrives in select theaters and on demand March 4. I'm here talking with the star of this new film, Mo Dunford. How are you, Mo? Well pronounced, brother. You got it right in one. How you doing, Rama? Good, How are you? Good. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. Wow, no it's quite the season you've been having, Mo. You had Texas Chainsaw Massacre released last week, and now you mm -hmm. have Night Ride coming out next week. Two projects that you worked hard for and uh, that are getting out there for the world to see. How does that make you feel? I'm grateful, brother. I'm really, really grateful because of the two years we've all had, uh, I know what it's like to be out of work. And I just want to tell stories and be the best that I can be and hope the audience in enjoys what we do as a team. You know? Awesome, awesome. I, I know we're going to dive deep into Night Ride, but I got to ask you this. Uh, was it a relief uh, for you to not have to do Texan accent in Night Ride that you could just speak <laughs> <laughs> Or uh, you have fun with a conquering Texan accent in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> that would be amazing, wouldn't it? With Stephen Fingles and says, here, I've got a great script for you. The only thing is you got to do it in one take. you got to do all the driving. you got to do all the lines. Oh, and you got to do it in Texan as well. Yeah, that would be just the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? That would be, yeah, right, you're crazy. No. Um, uh, I'm really glad I didn't have to do it in a Texan accent. I've been there. Um, but, you know, it's funny, I, I had just done Texas at the time. I think it was my last week on Texas, and Stephen rang me about this. He said, I've got a script for you. I have a read. And it was just, it was great the way it happened, because he said, have a read, see what you think. And I loved it. My good friend Ben Conway wrote it. Mm -hmm. And I've been friend with Ben's for years. We met in the gym years ago. And uh, we always, we chat about collaborating you know just chat on making shorts and we made a short together I'm going to make another one when I get back and uh you know he's just he's an amazing writer and Stephen's an incredible filmmaker and it's just they're collaborating with the two of them combined in lockdown in February in Ireland last this time last year was you know so many actors and artists and people just want to create something you know and we were told last year we're all encouraged not to connect with one another. And it was great that this time last year, I was able to have a Zoom with these guys who I respect and admired and uh, talk about doing something crazy and not in a Texan accent. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I, I know you mentioned uh, the one shot. So that's like the big appeal about this movie. Uh, one, a real time one shot take. It's an incredible task. Um, how did that work exactly? Because I noticed though the camera was following you and then the camera got mounted on top of the, the hood of the car. And uh, so we can see you behind the wheels. I mean, how many times did you guys uh, have to rehearse prior to the filming? What happens if you guys mess up and have to do another take? How did that work exactly? We, <laughs> we'd rehearse for about a week. <laughs> and then we'd shoot for six days and we'd do a take each day uh, over those six days. Wow. And we rehearsed the logistics from the from the get go, you know, like I was saying on the Zoom chats to be included in in, in script changes with Ben and Stephen and, and, and Paul Kennedy, the producer. And, and it was sort of like pulling off a heist, mate. There's no other word to describe it. Mm. You know, what kind of car are you going to drive? I got to drive my own car to and from set, whereas normally there's loads of emails and agents involved and <clears throat> You know, my, my agent is great and he was, a, you know, he, he, he looked at this script and, and loved it, you know, and he was like, this is something that you got to do. And I just, we all knew this is an incredible project, you know, Ben is my brother, he's my friend and he's an incredible writer, um, loves the work of Michael Mann and the references to Michael Mann and uh, American movies. And Stephen's just, he's, 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 he's extraordinary, you know, uh, he really thinks outside the box. So it kind of came down to me because I was the guy driving the car, you know, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> there's there's little challenges, you know, there's little challenges you set yourself in life, isn't there? You know, it's going, do you want to step away from this or do you want to do it? And this was one of those things where I've been acting for nearly 15 years now. I said, well, this is this is a challenge. And it's if we pull it off and if the audience one day a year from now can watch it on a big screen or small screen can see our work and Hopefully they can tell that a good bunch of lads were behind it and they cared about it. And hopefully, you know, they'll, hopefully they'll be, they'll have fun. Um, what sort of emotional connection that you managed to, to find with them? 
And did you bring your, a lot of yourself into this performance, into your character? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I always like to start off with saying where are the similarities and where are the, the things that aren't so similar and uh, uh, use the magic, draw on imagination then. And also uh, your inspirations. I'm very inspired by the work of Michael Mann and this one, uh, um, particularly, you know, Thief and Heat and, and Collateral, but also, you know, you got to come from here and trust the director and how restrained one can be. Um, and if my energy driving the wheels of the car is too kind of Texan, you know, to um, no, to to pull back, yeah. you know, um, and go. That this is that one guy who I tell you, I tell you what I connect with is what we all connect is, uh, you know they're all parts of our lives that we want to leave in the past and move on and be the best version of ourselves. And I always like at the end of, towards the end of Ben's script that there is a hope that he can move forward. And, you know, it's all that Gene Kelly or John Wayne riding off into the sunset or whatever, you know, you want, he wants to be with his girl. He wants, you know, we can all relate to that. He wants to start a better life. And I said, whatever hell he goes through here, it's worth it. That's something I always like to look at. It's 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 scary, and I was afraid at times, but that's why I do it. And um, uh, the character and the and the, the piece were uh, were were great and a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> and this is quite the chatty movie, isn't it? Is this the most dialogue driven movie you've ever done? You could say that, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of talking, mate. Yeah, there's a lot of talking. Yeah, yeah. Hasn't quite, you know, kind of rubbed off on me, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> I once, I did a movie before in Northern Ireland. And it was, it was far from the cushiest job because I had to do a lot of digging and crawling in it. But there was hardly any lines of dialogue, oh. and I said, "Yeah, I'm freezing, but at least I don't have to speak very much. I should work up here more often." <laughs> and that's karma. Karma got me in the end, you know. Um, I once uh, worked with an actor in theater years ago and he was living with me and we were doing Shakespeare and uh, he was playing the waiter in this role. And I said to him, Anthony, you've done so many great roles with this uh, production company. Why play the waiter? And he kind of thought about it and he, he stopped and he looked and he goes, Mo, I love acting, but I just hate talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, this, look, there was a lot of dialogue in this. Um, yes. A lot of back and forth, a lot of inspirations of uh, I don't know, lock or uncut gems or an amalgamation of these things. And um, the characters inform what's going on. All I got to do is drive. And that's something that Stephen said, all you got to do is drive the car, don't crash. Say your lines and don't forget them. And, you know, when so much is going on, that's a good sort of rule to stick by, you know. <laughs> yes. Now, big fan of Vikings, big fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, big fan of Night Ride. What's next on your horizon, uh, Mo? Uh, what can we expect from you next? I'm doing a TV show called uh, the, the Head Season 2, and I'm doing a movie with an actor, an Irish actor I wanted to work with for years, who I love, called Barry Ward. And uh, that's uh, a big, long shoot up in, the, up in the Tibetan mountains, so... Wish me luck. Hopefully they won't ask me to do any texting up there. <laughs> For my fans at home, everybody go check out Night Ride, arriving in select theaters and on demand March 4. Mo Dunford, thank you so much for talking to me and congratulations. Thank you so much, bro. Have a good day. Good.